Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I have a news clip for you from Waters World, where Jesse interviews a gender studies professor, and she's talking about white male privilege. And it's shocking. You know, all you have to do is substitute any other racial group or any other gender group into her conversation where she says, you know, white men, and just plug any other group in there and see if it's acceptable. See if you could get away with saying it in today's setting. So honestly, the white straight man is the last group of people that we are allowed to openly discriminate against. And please appreciate, my friends, that it's done only under the guise of, and we're doing this to stop prejudice and racism and male oppression. So it's a nice little trick, isn't it? Where you actually get to discriminate against somebody on the basis that they are discriminating on people. So this is just a real basic, you know, political, psychological, emotional tactic that leftists constantly employ, all right? So understand, the minute someone starts accusing you, anyway, I'm going to play the clip, but stick around until the end because I've got a little bit more I'd like to say about it. Here's the clip. Thank you, everyone. Here in New York, we'll be holding a class called Male Melancholia, Crisis Masculinity, which focuses on the fall of white masculinity. Masha Tupitsin is a professor of film and gender studies who teaches the course, and she joins me now. All right, Professor, what is toxic masculinity, first of all? Uh, I mean, I would say there are different ways to describe it, but I, what, the way that I refer to it is to think about toxic masculinity as um, when masculinity has to kind of abuse its power in order to function. How would I demonstrate on a day-to-day -day basis toxic masculinity? Well, I mean, I think it's that's a complicated question, but on a daily basis, it would be in your relationships with other people and your relationships with women in the workplace and the way that you relate to your own power in the workplace. Just by and being a jerk life. and yeah. offensive and imposing my will on other people. Yeah, or even negotiating that imposition of will on other people, right? This idea that you have to kind of stoke my ego or behave a certain way to get ahead. Okay, so white masculinity is now a problem it's it's there's a downfall among white males how so well I'm not saying that there's a downfall I don't think there's a loss of power although men are always lamenting their loss of power how That's are we like doing one that? of the well this constant idea even someone like President Trump who's always lamenting sort of the good old days or a show like Mad Men, which is always focusing on this kind of loss of supremacy that men once held so that narrative has been going on. So when narrative. Donald Trump says, make America great again, mm -hmm. what is he trying to say? That we want to return to the good old days yeah. where white men ruled the earth? Yeah, and still rule the earth. But that's being destabilized. And so there's this constant kind of narrative of mourning and loss about what's been lost. But what really needs to happen... But, but couldn't the president just be it, saying, well, I want to go back to the 80s, where the economy was, the was roaring and, and we were doing great? King. And when he was the king. I mean, couldn't that be uh, what he's saying? Maybe not. But either about way, it's self-referential. White right? males made me more about let's go back to when America was strong and powerful and the economy was great. And it was a patriarchy that no one questioned. But is he saying there was a patriarchy that no one questioned? But or no is one that has to say saying? that. We already. I think there isn't any debate anymore whether sexism is real. I think even the disbelievers are now believers. So you think when Trump says "Make America Great Again," mm -hmm. he wants to go back? to the time when sexism was good? Well, when it was good and it certainly wasn't questioned and people were afraid to question it. But how do you it. know part that? Of, let me just finish. So part of what I think is important about the Me Too movement or the Time's Up movement is that it's making everyone question what the effects of masculinity have been, right? It's making everyone have that conversation and to think about how that, um, 
how sexism has been totally normalized, just on an everyday level. But how level. do you know, though? Because you don't know. Well, I'm also, I am a woman, and sexism is part of the daily fabric of all women's okay, lives. Okay, but you don't know when Trump says, make America great again, he's talking about wanting well, to bring back sexism. Now we're having a conversation sexism. about mind reading as opposed to interpretation. Well, but you brought up that he wanted because to go back to Because these are very old days. narratives, and I they don't just up. refer to, the, to national politics. National politics also consists of race and class and gender. It's a kind of package deal, right? When you're talking about nation building, you're talking about a lot of other multidimensional things. Okay, well, I, I listen, I uh, did not take that from what the president said when he uses that slogan. Mm -hmm. I guess you're so interpreting it So I didn't come here just to discuss his slogan. Right, so well, slogan. what do white men need to do in America now? How can we improve in your opinion? Well, to me, the crisis is really about this lack of responsibility and this lack of self-interrogation, right? That's really what, I mean, etymologically, the root of crisis means this point at which change must come. But what do you so mean? So either the change can come or it won't. But what needs to happen is that men start doing some of the work and interrogation around masculinity as opposed to all these other sort of special interest groups. Okay, like so let's just studies. take it step by step. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm a white man. Mm -hmm. What do I need to ask myself or what do I need to address internally about my white male well, I would say two Brand. things to start with. So one is what kind of privileges have I inherited because of my um, whiteness and my masculine, straight masculinity, let's white say. White privilege. White privilege, but it also has to do with masculinity. So I would question, ask, like, and we all have to ask that question. What privileges do we come so, in the world okay, with and so, do we abuse those privileges? Okay, so you want question. white men, I'll well, just take a step back. You want white men to recognize mm -hmm. that they have certain advantages by being born a white straight male yes that they use and they want and you sh and i as a white straight mm -hmm. male should be more conscious of my privileges when mm -hmm. i go walk around in everyday society you should be but most likely you won't be because you don't have to i mean that's sort of the argument that i'm making most people are only conscious because they're disenfranchised in some way right so they're aware of how the dominant power works and how their own lives function and people who have dominant power don't have to ask those questions. Okay. So the questions that men have to ask themselves are the same questions that all kind of people that are struggling for consciousness and liberation and justice mm -hmm. need to ask so that the world can be better what for about, everyone. What about a guy in, in Minnesota who's mm -hmm. making, you know, $20 an hour, uh, his really tough job, he's got a family he's trying to support and uh, the economy's not working for him and things are tough. Mm -hmm. How does he have white privilege? Well, I, you didn't specify that he is white, well, so I don't I know now. that he has white privilege. Um, he still is a, even if he doesn't have economic privilege, right? I'm he not still saying, has racial privilege. He still has racial privilege. Okay. He still has masculine privilege. He can walk into a bar, right, mm -hmm. and behave a certain way because he's a man that he might not be able to walk into his job and behave that way, right? We all can negotiate power in different ways. So just because you're not powerful in one <laughs> setting, you can still be powerful right. so and privileged. When I in walk into setting. a bar as a straight white male, mm -hmm. Am I being too confident when I walk into the bar? Well, should again, I, I don't know should how I you go are in, in a more humble a way? Bar. I just know that men can behave a certain way in public settings and in bars that is different from women. I mean, this is the case for everyone, right? There are codes that we're all following. Even if we just go to work and we don't behave a like certain I way, can we can loud get Like I can be loud and obnoxious and, and I can buy people drinks aggressive. and I can flirt with people. Is right. that what you're saying? And, and you women can't do that? Well, they might do it, but they pay a different price for that. Okay. Even just on the level of you might not be seen as someone desperate if you're a single man that walks into a bar. Right. Whereas if a woman walks into a bar and she's single, that is perceived as a very different kind of social gesture. Okay. And then lastly, so what, was the, what was the other that. question I'm supposed to ask myself as a straight white man? Well, you've interrupted me so many times and now I can't remember. <laughs> I guess that's probably by toxic masculinity. Probably. All right, Professor, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Coming up, Diamond and Silk take on Rosie O'Donnell. Can't wait for this. Okay, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that a great clip though? Great interview. I liked uh, the beginning part of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> right where the girl's like no i could beat you in everything it's like well how much do you bench press it's like well i could beat you so this is the level of entitlement and uh just ignorance and stupidity you know that we're dealing with and the other girl you know dressed up like a little gang member talking about male aggression you know what i mean so okay the professor right wow no offense but <clears throat> the instant you look at somebody you know what i mean just 
tenth of a second. It's like, okay, she's got an eating disorder, she's got a hormonal imbalance, she has emotional problems, she has psychological problems, and she hates men. Boom! Right, and it takes about a tenth of a second to, you know, come to those realizations. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know it's the truth, right? Okay, moving on. Uh, wow, what a bit of projection there, huh? Could you imagine, um, like, meeting up with a girl like this and thinking that you're getting lucky, right, and then going home with her? Oh, my God. Like, with that psychological attitude towards men, you know that she'd hurt you, right? So be careful out there, men. The level of hostility, resentment towards men, and the degree of entitlement that it creates in how, you know, the groups are treating the white straight men is toxic. Stay away. Please don't go into PUA mode. Please don't go into pump and dump mode. Recognize where you are. Recognize what the situation is. Recognize why MGTOW is the intelligent, proper choice for a man to make. So, you know, let's break it down. Apparently, we come from toxic masculinity, okay, that the men <clears throat> want to go back to madman days, that the white straight man <laughs> needs to self-examine and check his privilege. All the while, she's pretending like she's going to start to cry or she's going to start to pound, you know, the desk with her fists in this emotional tirade, right? The whole time, Jesse is like good-naturingly, you know, playing with her a little bit. And she thinks it's serious, you know what I mean? So the interaction, you know what, the friendly questioning versus the authoritative, emotional, uh, aggressive, threatening of aggression. She's the one who ha is threatening aggression. She is the one who is emotionally unstable and trying to take advantage of her privilege. It's obvious, okay? The man is just sitting there smiling. That's what men mostly do when they're interacting with women. This is this is usually how you act when you're much stronger than somebody. You know what I mean? It's like you're lightly amused with them, you're joking around with them a little bit, and it's like they're serious. So recognize its projection. Recognize the level of emotional contempt that the women must have in order to project the attitudes that they demonstrate. Understand how dangerous it is for a good-natured, unsuspecting man to interact with someone like that. Just the psychological and the emotional damage, you know what I mean? The abuse that she attempted to heap upon him for simply interviewing her, for simply asking her questions as if it was her show, right? As if she's going to just have this, you know, 10-minute monologue, right? It's amazing. Uh, she could have done it, too, but it would have been emotionally, you know, fueled. So I hope that this gets through to you. I hope you recognize how dangerous it would be to interact with someone like that. Even like as, uh, you know, even as a professor and even for the women to be, anyway, I'm real curious what you guys have to say about this. Please let me know in the comments section below. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, support the Howard Dare channel so that I can continue to put out content. And join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.